So far, we've learned about simple dominance. We said before that if you had a trait and one allele is dominant and one allele is recessive, the dominant trait would always show up. You wouldn't see the recessive trait. The only way you could see this trait is if both alleles in the individual were recessive. But what we're talking about today is something a little bit more complicated. Other forms of gene expression. It's based on this idea of simple dominance, but there's a little bit more to it. We're going to go through a few different types. There's some other possibilities. Now, incomplete dominance. You remember when we talked about Mendel and we said that everybody assumed that the children were always a blending of traits from their parents? And they said Mendel showed that that was wrong. There's dominant alleles and recessive alleles. There are some cases where the offspring is really a blending of the parents' traits. And that's called incomplete dominance. There are some traits in some species that if you have a hybrid, a hybrid means you're heterozygous. You have one of each allele. So sometimes we have a heterozygous individual, a hybrid, that results in a phenotype that looks like it's halfway between the two pure forms. In other words, snapdragons. It's a great example. There's red snapdragons, there's white snapdragons. <clears throat> but if you take a red snapdragon and you cross-pollinate it with a white snapdragon, you end up with pink. Now, this isn't some of the petals are red and some of the petals are white. All the petals have this pinkish hue to them because we have what's called incomplete dominance. So we're seeing both the red phenotype and the white phenotype being expressed in this plant. The second type of other type of dominance that we're going to be talking about, it's called multiple alleles. Now, before we talk about you can be either big A or little a, big B or little B, there's only two different alleles for a trait. Well, there's no reason why there can't be more, and in some cases there are. So for some traits, there's more than two possible alleles. Here's a good example of this. Let's talk about rabbit fur. Rabbits have four different alleles for fur color. Now, you can see that big C gives you brown fur, and that's dominant over the other three. But you can have a chinchilla type, which is one type of coating. The Himalayan type, which is this mixed color grayish coating. And you have a third allele that, if it's expressed, is actually albino. So, of course, this can cover up all three of these, but you can have different alleles, more than just two alleles for the same color. So, each individual, as you saw from that uh, diagram of the rabbits, each person can only carry two of the alleles. So the bunny fur was either this C or that C. You had four choices to choose from, but the individual rabbits only carried two of those alleles. Now, the one example we're going to spend some time talking about is blood typing. In blood typing, we have three alleles for blood. They're referred to as IA, IB, and I. Now in lab, we're probably going to just be using the letters A, B, and O instead of I. I stands for immunoglobulin. It's a fancy name of, of describing the antigen that you find on red blood cells. Okay? Remember, antigens are these markers that distinguish whether or not they belong to the body or don't belong to the body, very important in the immune response. Well, your red blood cells contain antigens, or at least some of you do. And if you are blood type A, you have these little A antigens. If you're blood type B, you have a different type. And if you're blood type O, you have no antigens.
So we have our choice of having this, this, and this. There's multiple alleles, and we have only two of them in our bodies. And those two that we have will determine which blood type we have. So if there's more than one choice, if there's more than just two choices, tall plants or short plants, then we're, that's what we call multiple alleles. Now, built into this idea of multiple alleles, we can also see what's called co-dominance. Now, incomplete dominance, where we saw a blending of the two traits. We saw the red flowers and the white flowers turn into pink flowers. But co-dominance is where neither one is really in charge. They're both kind of in charge. You actually see both different forms, both different phenotypes are going to be expressed. So if you've got both alleles, you see both types. And we can go back to our example about blood typing to see this. Because if you've got this, you have little A's on your blood. If you've got this, you have little B's on your blood. If you have this, you have nothing on your blood. But if you have this and this, if you have the allele for A antigens and B antigens, your red blood cell contains both. See in this picture right here, we've got the little A antigens and the B antigens. It's not like a, a blending of these two. It's either, it's, it's, it's both of them. So if you're blood type A, you just have the A's. B, you have the B's. But if you have AB, you are, have both A's and B's on your blood. And at the same time while we're talking about it, you can see that this also shows regular dominance and incomplete dominance while showing multiple alleles because the antigen that doesn't have any, the, the marker that doesn't have any antigens, the I, the little I here, this one gets covered up if you get either one of these. So you can see in the blood type, if you have the allele for A and the allele for O, your blood type A. You can be AA or AO to be A. And these are the ones we're going to be using more often. These are the genotype expression we're going to use more often. If you're type B, you can get covered up, you can cover up the O with a B, so you can be BB or BO. If you're AB, there's only one way to be AB. You have to have the allele for A and the allele for B. There's only one way to be type O, and that's to have the two recessive alleles for O. So blood typing really shows a lot of the things we're talking about. Simple dominance, multiple alleles, and co-dominance. Another, another example of this is in cows. It's also in horses, too. The, the phrase is called roan. And what you see if you take a cow that's got this reddish type of coat and a cow that's got white, you mix them together, and you get a cow that's got patches of red and patches of white. This isn't a pink cow. This is a cow that's got red areas and white areas. So both alleles, the red and the white, are being expressed. This would be co-dominance because you're seeing both of the alleles so, there's another situation we should deal with, and that's what's called polygenic traits. And if you know a little bit about your, your English language, the term poly means many. Many gene traits. Now, as you may have suspected, not every trait you see is caused by a single gene. There's a lot of characteristics that are caused by multiple genes. Eye color is one example. Eye color has several different genes which determine what the color of your eye is. One gene is going to say how much green is in your eye. Another gene is going to say how much brown is in your eye. Well, obviously, if you've got, um, you, you can see that if you've got a lot of brown and this gene says a little bit of green and this is a little bit, a lot of brown, your eyes tend to be more brown. But if you have uh, this gene saying you've got a bunch of green and a bunch of brown, that's where we get people with like hazel eyes. So there's different genes that code for eye color. Another polygenic trait is height. Now we know that there's not just short people and tall people. There's a wide range of people. 
And what we figured out is that there's at least three different genes which code for how tall you're going to be. And if you're dominant for all of these genes, you're very, very tall. Whereas if you're recessive for a lot of these genes, you're not quite as tall. And this actually applies to um, other characteristics, especially those found in human beings, such as skin color or hair color. There's a bunch of different genes that you have to look at them all together, and they determine the, the ultimate phenotype. Which is why whenever you have a trait where you see like a wide variety of, uh, like say skin color from very light to very dark, that's an indication that it's probably controlled by several different genes. So eye color, as well as height and skin color, is a combination of gene expressions. One last factor we're going to be talking about when we're talking about how genes express themselves are environmental factors. What this means is that what your phenotype is, how you look, can in some cases be affected by where you live and what's around you. It's called environmental factors. Great example of this is the Arctic fox. And you, you know of other animals that do this, but we're going to use this guy as our as our example. In the summer, when it's warm, the gene for coat color becomes activated. It gets turned on, and we see a dark coat. But when it gets cold outside, this gene turns off, and it develops a white coat. Now, it's the same gene doing this color and this color. Sometimes it's turned on, for this color, sometimes turn off for that color. And that actually gives the Arctic fox an advantage because when it's warmer weather, when there's green and brown out, this guy can now blend in because it's more of a brown color. And yet when the snow hits and everything in the background is completely white, now he's completely white as well. Makes great for hunting if you can sneak up on your prey. Also, it's good for hiding from predators. We know that there's some... Uh, some other animals, rabbits and whatnot, that may do the same thing. So it's either to sneak up on your prey or to hide from your prey. The last factor we have to talk about is sex linkage. Now, when we were talking about chromosomes before, we talked about the sex chromosomes, which are X and Y. And of course, women are XX and men are XY. And the reason why we draw them like this is if you take a look at it, it looks like there's a piece missing right here from the Y chromosome. If we had this little piece right here, it'd be an X chromosome. And in reality, when you look at the chromosomes, you'd see that the X chromosome is this really long chromosome, whereas the Y chromosome is really short. So there are genes in this part of this chromosome that you never see here because that part of the chromosome is missing. So, let's think about this. If you have a recessive gene on the X chromosome, there's three possible alleles. You can have X, you can have X which shows the trait, and Y Y can't show the trait because it's missing that part of the DNA. So, if this is, say, some sort of blood disorder, it's a recessive gene for a blood disorder, then what are possibilities for people? Well, it turns out if you're a woman, you can have three possibilities. You can be normal. You could have one of the genes for the disorder. In this case, you're a carrier. What that means is you don't see this disorder. You appear totally normal because of the dominant allele here, but you could pass on this disorder trait. Or you could have the disorder. Three possibilities for women. But for guys, since one of the alleles has to be Y in order to be a guy, you only have two choices. 
you are completely normal. Or you show the trait. See, the Y can't cover up this recessive allele because it's missing the trait to cover it up. So guys have no choice. They either don't have it or they do have it. Women can not have it, be a carrier and not have it, or have it. So, sex linkage is, since sex in many animals is based on the, on the sex chromosomes, and again, because I told you about the difference in length, there are some genes that are found only on the X. There's some genes that are found on the Y that are not on the X, but in, in most cases, there's genes on the X that you can't find on the Y because it's so short. So we're going to be focusing on the changes in the X chromosome. It's long. So because of this, and what I just showed you, many women don't have the same chance of getting a gene if it's found on the X chromosome. And we normally look at this when we see disorders. Now, one of these disorders I was talking about before is color blindness. Color blindness is carried on the X chromosome. And the gene for color blindness is not found on the Y chromosome. So, the X chromosome, again, is recessive, like I showed you before. But because it's on the X chromosome, it changes the amount of males and females that can be colorblind. For example, if you take a colorblind woman and a normal male, there's only one way to be a colorblind woman, and that's to have the recessive colorblind allele. And if you're a normal male, there's only one way to be like that, is your X has to be normal and not colorblind allele. And then you've got the Y. So if we do an opponent square like we did before, we put the male gametes, separate these two, put the male gametes on one side and the female on the other side. Here's what we're going to get. We're going to get X and the X chromosome with the colorblindness trait. And we're going to get a male with the colorblindness trait. And we're going to get a male here, and we're going to get a female here. Now, take a look at the ratio. If you if you if you look at the offspring from a colorblind woman and a normal guy, look at what happens. All the men are colorblind because they've got this, and they don't have another allele to cover this up. But none of the women are colorblind because they've got the normal X to cover up the colorblindness trait, the X being dominant over XC. So, whenever you see a trait that has a different expression in males and females, women get it more, or guys get it more, it's not an equal 50-50 ratio, then it's a sex-linked trait. So what have we gone through so far? Well, we've talked about incomplete dominance. That's where you see a blending of traits. The red plus the white gives you the pink. We've also seen in some cases that there aren't just two alleles, not just big T's and little T's, where you have multiple alleles. One of the most common is the A, B, O blood typing on the red blood cells. Another one I showed you is that rabbit fur, that there's four different alleles for a rabbit fur. Then there's this thing called codominance. Now again, incomplete dominance means you see a third type. Pink flowers is a third type. But in codominance, that's where they express both phenotypes. They, they express both genes. And you saw that with the roan cattle, how you've got... Uh, patches of red and patches of white. And also, ABO blood typing does show you multiple alleles, because if you've got the A allele and the B allele, you see them both being expressed. We also saw this thing called polygenic traits. That means more than one gene codes for the particular trait you're looking for. We also saw how, in some cases, 
the environment can alter which gene is being expressed. That's your white rabbits and your brown rabbits and your white foxes and your brown foxes. And the last thing we saw is sex-linked traits. That's where the trait is coded for typically on the X chromosome because there's X and Y and you don't see it on the Y. By the way, if it's not sex-linked, it's what's called autosomal. So if it's on any of the other chromosomes, it's referred to as being autosomal. But if it's on the XY chromosomes, traits on the XY chromosomes, it's called sex-linked. Okay, so what I've got for you now is a worksheet in which you guys can go through and try all these different traits. Then I've got an answer key for you. And then there's a quick quiz you can take online. Good luck.